Hi there, everybody. Uh, I'm going to be making this tutorial to talk about the connection between uh, how to use the eMotion uh, sensing system with the transmitter and the wireless uh, sensors, and how to make that talk to processing. Uh, my name is John Park, and uh, I'm a, it's a pleasure to, to be demoing the system for all of you here today. So um, how this is going to work is so we're going to pull the, the sensor off of the transmitter base, and I'm going to make sure and hit the small on button, which is a little push button down below. Uh, it should be blinking green, and the transmitter base should be blinking green as well. Uh, if that is happening, that means they are paired and talking to each other. Uh, if not, there's a little upper button that will allow you to pair it to the base, uh, and hopefully that will get working. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, when we're working with the system here, uh, we're going to start with using the uh, eMotion client. And so I'm going to go ahead and open this. I'm using the Max 6 runtime, so I'm going to open this with the Max 6 runtime. If you have the full version of Max MSP on your machine, uh, this should work as well. But here we have the, uh, the program going here. Um, this is the eMotion Fuse program. We're going to click the On button first, then click on Select Device, choose USB Serial. And uh, it might take a moment here, but it should eventually lock on to um, into the whole system here, the transmitter base. So where it says uh, Mod Serial IMU, if you double click on this, this is going to open up a whole little calibration window and it'll help you visualize what's going on. As I move the sensor around, uh, you should be seeing those dials spin and move around. So go ahead and do this. And I'm actually going to put the sensor down on the flat surface here, like so. And then when we, when we do that, now I'm going to hit this Calibrate button over here. You can see the percentage here counting from 0 all the way to 100%. And this is calibrating what it thinks is flat, because this is the, the twist sensor. Uh, and this, this essentially is an accelerometer and a gyroscope. And as long as it gets a chance to calibrate first, then it'll have a sense of what is flat ground. And then you can tilt it and pitch it and do all that. So when the calibration is done, now it says done 100%. Now when I go ahead and tilt and twist this around, we can kind of see the up, the real-time updating uh, visual there. Great. So let's talk about getting this to talk with uh, processing. Well, we can see in the eMotion Fuse program over here that it says, hey, are you using OSC? If so, here's an IP address in the port. So OSC stands for Open Sound Control, and this is the protocol that we're going to be using to communicate between Max MSP and a processing sketch. So we're going to leave both of these settings by default. The IP address, this is the local IP address for your machine. This will assume that you're running these two programs off the same computer. Uh, and the port number, we're going to leave at 7400. So let's go ahead and uh, jump over here into our processing sketch. Um, actually, before we even do that, um, I want to give you a quick sense that we're essentially transmitting three different pieces of data, the X, the Y, and the Z as we move this thing around. You could do more than that. You could do, uh, it actually tracks if there's a falling aspect. So if I, if you, you might not be able to see it here with the screen capture, but if you kind of have a dropping motion, we have a G free fall threshold, uh, and it tells you that it's falling. Um, there are many different pieces of data that you could you know, glob onto while running, sending this into processing. But for what we're doing here, we're just going to be talking about the X, Y, and Z tilt. So in order to really route that data to processing, we're going to be opening this second patch. This is the Digital Data Workstation, or DDW. Uh, if we go ahead and open this with Max 6, uh, it looks something like this. Now we can create new tracks. Each track will be sending its own piece of data. And we want three different ones, one for the X, Y, and Z. So I'm going to click that three times. And for the input data feed, I'm going to go ahead and click on this and choose the first one to be the Euler underscore X, Euler underscore Y, and Euler underscore Z. And my understanding is that the, um, the Euler calculation has to do with uh, rotational movement data. So um, we could just run this as is, but we also might want to rescale the information. So, the data range coming in through the sensor is between negative 1 and positive 1, depending on what angle you're tilting your sensor at. We can rescale that to whatever values that we want. So we're going to click on this red rescale button. This is for the Euler X. And we're going to turn on rescale. And since the old values, this is where all the, all the old values are, or the raw data coming in, and this is the newly scaled value. 
So we're going to go from negative 1 to positive 1, since that's the kind of native range it wants to work in. Uh, and it's fine that it scales it from 0 to 1, because that's what we're going to use in processing. But even more importantly here, where we have this OSC index, this is the label associated with that data. So I'm going to click in here and say forward slash x. They almost always start with a forward slash, and I'm calling it x because that's what I'm listening for in my processing program. So as soon as you've hit the return button, and we can close that, we can do that for all three of these. Rescale from negative 1 to positive 1, and I can call this forward slash y. And we'll go ahead and do the third one here. Turn it on, forward slash z, and we're going from negative 1 to positive 1. All right, great. So now, as I move this around, you can kind of see the numbers, um, or you can see the, the information coming around here. And it's also good to know that this is the raw value coming in. The little yellow dots means, hey, I am hearing a signal coming in. And then it's rescaling to the new value, which is over here. And these should all roughly be between 0 and 1. So it is, in fact, now sending all this information over OSC, over port 7400. It's time to jump over to the processing end and see what's going on. So here's the processing sketch. I have called it eMotion Processing. I've tried to leave, leave some comments here. Um, and if you're brand new to processing, this, this might, um, might be a little bit tricky, but uh, I'm going to try and walk you through it. So by default, processing doesn't have a built-in library to hear OSC messages or the OSC protocol. But luckily, there's a really great library. It's, uh, easy, free uh, one that can actually enable OSC messages into processing, and it's called OSC P5. Uh, you can download it online. Um, so that's why we have these import lines for OSC P5. Now for the remote location, this is the IP address of the machine that, that we're running from. We're using the exact same number here. This is the local IP, 127.0.0.1. And here's the port 7400. And here's the 7400 again saying, yes, that's the OSC port we're really listening for. So what's going on is uh, I've created essentially three variables here in X, in Y, in Z. And those three variables are um, essentially the, the program is going to be listening for an OSC message. When it hears one, it's going to be checking if that message is associated with one of these labels. And here's the label slash X slash Y slash Z. If it is the slash x, then it's going to assign the data associated with that to this variable that we made in processing called in x. And if it's the OSC message is labeled y, we have the in y. And if it's labeled slash z, we have the in z. So that's how it's um, essentially pulling in the, the data, assigning it to a variable. And then up in the void draw, we're just going to very simply use this to change the width and height of a rectangle. Here we've got width times in x height times in y, and the in z, or the compass-based rotation, that's where actually I um, arbitrarily chose to have that change the fill color of the rectangle. It's affecting the red channel as well as the green channel of the fill. So let's run it and see. Fingers crossed it works. Okay. So I am holding the sensor now uh, flat as if it's on the table. If I rotate it forwards, like the nose diving on a plane, we're changing the height of this rectangle. If I go ahead and rotate it kind of left to right, like the wings on an airplane here, uh, I'm stretching out the width of the rectangle. And if I rotate this as if it's a compass along the z-axis, I'm changing the fill of both the green and the red channels. Okay. So um, that's how you could use this in real time in processing. And these are just three sensor values. You could choose more of them. You have multiple sensors all routing through OSC. Um, but I decided just to do three to keep it simple. And we also have the incoming data. I have one little text line just letting you know what processing is hearing. So I've got the X, Y, and Z data coming in. You don't need this text line here, by the way, to be drawing in order to have this affect things like your rectangles. Um, but it's a little visual guide. If you don't need it there, you can comment out that line with two slashes, rerun the program, and you won't be seeing that, that kind of diagnostic line. But there we go. Uh, this is the way to kind of communicate between the emotion sensing system and processing. It's all via OSC and the OSC P5 uh, library. And uh, this is a really great little system here because we can now have this wireless connection between our uh, wireless transmitter with its own little battery 
um, talking to a transmitter base, uh, it opens up a lot of possibilities for performing in artistry. So thank you. I hope you have a great day here.